my dudes, how are you doing? I hope you're having a goddamn great day. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we will be discussing the next steps in the AC Milan future. Of course, there have been reports coming out saying that Pioli and AC Milan are set to part ways at the end of the season. And I think the, the relationships run its course, you know. He helped them win the, their first Scudetto in what was it, like a decade. He helped them, you know, achieve greatness, get to the Champions League. But it's that next step, it's that, you know, continuation of success that the, the Milan side is looking for. And there have been quite a few rumors and links with Antonio Conte and AC Milan, which is very, very strange and awkward. He's, he's managed Juventus, he's managed Inter Milan, and potentially also AC Milan. He has no shame. If, if this does happen, if this does go through, he has no shame. But he does breed success. He does create success. He builds, you know, really good, solid foundations for team success. We saw with that Juventus side, they went on and won so many more Scudetto trophies, you know, after he had left. We, we've now seen with the Inter Milan side after he's left, he's still, you know, built a, a very strong team that is still competing at the top. They're, they're set to win another Scudetto with um, Inzaghi. So, you know, Conte is, is a... He might, he might be a shameful man, but he does build very successful teams. And I have gone ahead and implemented and replicated the Inter Milan tactics for this AC Milan side. Now, I also know that with his first season at Chelsea, with the personnel that he had, he kind of reshaped his favorite formation, the 3-4 the or the 3-1-4-2 system, and he allowed Chelsea to play in a 3-4-3 system, allowing for Hazard and Pedro and, of course, Diogo Costa to play up front. That could also be a, a very possible, you know, option for the side. But I think that he would more so favor the, the front two system, having two strikers or at least one strong center forward and one, you know, striker to play off of that center forward as well. So that's why I've gone ahead and implemented his most recent set of tactics for the side. So if you guys don't mind smashing that like button down below, subscribing, commenting, doing all that good stuff, and let's hop on straight into the goddamn video. Now, taking a look at the formation, I've selected the 3-1-4-2 system. I've made no structural changes to it whatsoever. So therefore, it would be one goalkeeper, three centre-backs, one DM, two central midfielders, two wider midfielders, and then, of course, two strikers. So, guys, taking a look at the tactics. Now, for the tactical vision that I've selected, I've selected, obviously, kick and rush. Now, what this does is it allows for your forwards as well as your wider players, which could be your wing-backs, looking to penetrate the opposition's backline, looking to operating that space just in behind, looking to also exploit them with their pace as well. But at the same time, Conte's side is very well known for playing out from the back, looking to go short with the goalkeeper restarts, playing it into the centre-backs, and then either the centre-backs can look to go long with it if the opportunity is there, or they can look to try and play it into the midfield. Now, of course, with the kick and rush approach, you do tend to bypass the midfield more times than not, but you don't necessarily always have to do this. With the, the Inter Milan Conte side, of course, Brozovic, was the deep lying playmaker. He would also try and drop into the space, collect the ball from those goalkeeper restarts or show for the ball when the center backs were in possession looking to get on it and obviously look to try and dictate the pace of play. Of course, with again that Inter Milan side, that's what we're trying to compare this team to. The likes of Aniko Barella, uh, Chalanoglu, they would operate slightly higher up the field, look to try and link up very nicely with a Lukaku and a Latara Martinez. And more so with Rinders and Ruben Loftus Cheek, who we have in those um, pole positions. They'll look to more or less do the same, look to try and also sometimes drop a bit deeper supports, the likes of a Brozovic, get on the ball, look to try and, you know, spray passes out wide. But more so, the wing backs or your wide midfielders in this case, they are going to be absolutely essential with those runs in behind or the ability to just hug the touchlines and try and generate as much, you know, space um, for your central areas to try and, you know, have time and space on the ball. So guys, for the defense and the defensive style, I've selected balance. Now what this does is it mimics a very solid Antonio Conte system, keeping the shape, keeping the structure, but it allows for your midfield to try and press the ball when it is in those central areas of the field, making it very hard for the opposition to somewhat win the midfield battle at times. In terms of the team width, of course, I'm trying to compact it as much as possible. So I have set this to 25, but it does condense a bit more when we do shift into that more defensive structure, which we will talk about soon enough. Along with the depth, of course, for the balanced approach, I've selected it to be 60, and this allows you to implement a very solid, good mid block. But of course, when we do, you know, shift it into a more defensive approach, it does drop ever so slightly. But essentially, what the, the mid block does is it allows you to operate with a, a good possessive, 
you know, brand of football on the offensive end, but it also allows you to minimize the space in behind your defense for them to not be exploited nearly half as much. So moving on to the offense. Now for the builder play, I've selected long ball as well as direct passing for the chance creation. Now this does go hand in hand with the tactical vision, but like I mentioned earlier, you don't necessarily always have to bypass the midfield. If we take a look at that initial Inter Milan side with Brozovic, Chalonoglu and Barella, they, they were very much involved in the game. They weren't always bypassed. Of course, Brozovic would drop a bit deeper, collect the ball, progress it further forward into the other midfielders who would also look to try and find the space and also try and squeeze in potential killer balls either out wide or potentially into the central strikers, which is exactly the role that you would expect the likes of a Benet Sir, uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, as well as a um, Ryan just to try and also facilitate and create for the system to be an absolute success. Onto the width, I've selected 85. Now, of course, you are trying to stretch the play as much as possible, operate in those wide areas, whether it's the center backs overlapping, joining up with the wider midfielders, as well as your two central midfielders also drifting slightly wider, looking to operate in those wider spaces, generating quite a bit of space for a Bennett Sir to try and operate in, and of course, your two strikers as well. For the players in the box, I've set it to five, allowing for two to three players to be in and around that attacking area. Now, it can be, of course, your two strikers with the addition of a possible central midfielder making a deeper run, or one of your wing backs as well breaking into the box. As for the corners and the free kicks, as always, it is set to four. Okay, guys, so taking a look at the instructions, starting off at the back with the goalkeeper, he will be set to come for crosses and, of course, have a balanced approach, staying on, on his line a bit more. You aren't playing the highest of line, so it doesn't really require um, a sweeper keeper. And we have seen in the past with an Antonio Conte system, the likes of a Hugo Lloris, the likes of uh, Thibaut Courtois, Chelsea, um, and even an, an, an Handanovic at uh, Inter Milan or potentially in Onana. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Handanovic, though. Um, not really requiring them to be off of their line, looking for them to more or less stay on the line, be a bit more of a traditional base goalkeeper and, and allowing for the center backs to try and deal with the, the through ball passes or the quick, you know, counter attacks. More so staying on the line, being a very good traditional base goalkeeper. As for the saving on crosses, however, come for crosses, be a bit more aggressive when those balls are fizzed into the box, whether it's a cutback or possibly a, a, a cross from a corner or a free kick or just a natural cross in general looking to be very aggressive and dealing with those aerial issues as for your center backs we've got three of them tomori tio and kalulu now kalulu and tomori they will be the more marauding forward type center backs looking to join up in those wider channels uh, linking up very effectively with the left and the right midfielder but with the likes of a tio the only change that we have made for him is he will be set to conservative interceptions allowing him to be the deepest outfield player at times looking to try and cover for a tomori or a kalulu if they are out of position as well. And as you'll see here for the likes of Tomori, just like with Kalulu, the overlap um, attacking support will be set to on. And we have seen this countless times, whether it's a David Luiz at um, Chelsea or, you know, uh, Romero at um, Spurs or maybe even a Bastoni at Inter Milan. He does want and require sometimes the centre-backs to step out a bit more, drive into the midfield, create overloads, or even dr uh, drift into those wider channels and again, create overloads and an extra passing option. Further forward now into your midfield, we've got the likes of Bennett. So of course I am mimicking the, the position of um, Brozovic. So for the for the likes of Bennett, so he will have a bit more of a zonal approach, sweeping up in front of that back four, looking to try and cut out and stifle the, the builder play going forward from the opposition. The attacking support is set to stay back while attacking. Now the reason I've set it to this and not you know drop between the defenders is, we did see countless times Brozovic would have a, a natural deep lying position, but every now and then he would tend to drift further forward and be a bit more involved in the attacking thirds of the field, which is exactly what stay back while attacking will do for your side. The interceptions will be set to conservative, and then he will also be the deep lying playmaker. Of course, it goes without saying. With the goalkeeper restarts, uh, they do tend to play quite short, playing it into the sense backs or even into the, the DM, looking to try and get him on the ball and look looking for him to try and run the game, whether it's the midfield or spraying passes out wide. Now, of course, you can also look to try and bypass the DM, but as an extra passing option, you do want him dropping into the spaces and collecting the ball in certain moments. And then finally, the defensive position for all of your midfielders, Rinders, Loftus-Cheek, as well as Bennett, sir, it will be set to cover the center. Now, what this does is, we spoke about it earlier, but likes of Conte wants his midfield to be nice and condensed, making it very hard for the opposition to generate any good rhythm in that central area for themselves. So essentially cover the center helps you do this very effectively. 
As we move further forward into our two central midfielders, both Ruben Loftus-Cheek as well as Reinders will have the same instructions. A balanced attack, a balanced crossing run, as well as balanced or normal interceptions. You don't really want to require them being set to anything other than that. You want them to be very good box-to-box -box midfielders, dropping a bit deeper, helping support the likes of Abrazovic when out of possession of the ball or when building out from the back. Or they can look to get further forward, create overloads, and also sometimes breaking into the box. You want them to have that option of staying on the edge or, you know, being that third man in and around the attacking area. As for the defensive position, like I mentioned, cover the center, it's absolutely essential. And then again, when in possession of the ball, we did see the likes of Echala Noglu as well as a Barella for Inter Milan drift into those wider areas, offer passing options for the wing backs, as well as, you know, an extra man in those wider areas, opening up quite a bit of space for Obrozovic to try and have time and space on the ball. So you want them to also have this role going forward. As you'll see here for the likes of a Ruben Loftus-Cheek, he's got the same role and instructions as well. So moving out wide now to the likes of a Hernandez and a Calabria, both of them will have the same instructions apart from one tweak for the Theo Hernandez role. So both will be told to come back on defense. Of course, they are natural fullbacks, but operating slightly further up the field, but you would still want and require them to drop a bit deeper, pick up the wide runners in certain moments. As for the chance creation, I've selected both to stay wide, operating that wider space, and quite often, the switch of play is there. Often, the likes of a Conte side will overload on the one side and then switch the play to the other. And you should try and do this throughout the course of your gameplay as well. But both will be looking to hug the touchlines on either flank. As for the support runs, I've selected it to be on balanced. Now, you can also have it just set to get in behind, which will allow them to consistently break in behind. But paired with the fact that the tactics are set to direct passing, it will encourage them to more naturally do this. And we have seen in the past, Conte doesn't always want just his fullbacks bombing further forward and breaking him behind all the time. He does want them to sometimes operate a bit more centrally, and therefore I think a balanced support can allow them to do this very nicely as well as very effectively. In terms of the interceptions, I've set this to aggressive. Now what this does is, because the, the central areas are so compact, it does vacate and allow for the opposition fullbacks to have a bit more time and space on the ball. And what you would want from your fullbacks is to engage with them very aggressively, mi minimizing the space between the opposition fullbacks or the opposition wide players, making sure that they are being pressed against the touchlines as best as possible. And I think aggressive interceptions will allow them to do this as well. As for the support on crosses for the likes of a Calabria, he is set to stay on the edge of the box, not often breaking into the box, but he can do so very, you know, on, on the odd occasion, he can do it. And he can also look to manually arc his runs into the, the back post areas. Whereas the likes of a Theo Hernandez, who has the same instructions apart from the ability for him to sometimes also break into the box, having it set to a balanced approach. You do want to try and maximize the attacking outlet that Theo Hernandez does have. And I do think that having him set to balance, allowing him the option to get into the box or staying out wide, it can allow for your team to have quite a bit of success down the left-hand channel. Further forward now, we've got the likes of Rafael Leao, as well as Jovic in those you know, two central positions. So Jovic will be a bit more of the, the physical number nine. And the only major change that I have made for him is that he's, he will be the target man. So he sometimes tends to drop slightly deeper, you know, back into the opposition, win the ball back, link up play with the players in and around him, or potentially win the flick on headers for a Rafael Leal. The support runs will be set to balance. I did mention the likes of an Inter Milan. Both of their forwards were quite happy to drift into those wider areas or sometimes stay a bit more central, depending on how the game was going. So a balanced approach for both will be essential. Like I mentioned, Jovic will be set to target player. Um, the interceptions will be set to normal, not overly looking to aggressively press the opposition. And then finally, the defensive support is set to basic. As you'll see here for the likes of a Rafael Leal, he's got everything set to balanced. You don't want or require too many changes to his system. Again, the ability for him to sometimes stay central or drift out wide. The mix attack does help quite a bit. It, it very much reflects the, the Lotaro Martinez role. He can play as a false nine. He can sometimes use his strength to the Inter Milan side's advantage or breaking in behind, winning those, you know, flick on headers and or allowing him to latch onto those flick on headers from a Lukaku or a Turam, who was mainly Lukaku at the time. Um, and then of course, the interceptions will be set to normal. And then just like with Jovic, it'll be set to a basic defensive support. Okay, guys, so when you shift into the more defensive structure, basically the, the wing backs will then have a slightly deeper starting position looking to try and compact nicely. And more so, it will reshape into a 5-3-2 system. 
So moving forward with the formation at hand, I've selected the 3-1-4-2 and all I've done is I've dropped the wider midfielders into the wing back areas. So essentially that's the only change I have made structurally. Therefore, it would be one goalkeeper, three centre backs, two wing backs, one DM, two central midfielders, and then of course, two strikers. Now, progressing on to the tactics, of course, it will still be set to kick and rush, but the defensive shape has changed. It will now be set to drop back, allowing them to not overly press or worry about the opposition or pressing in those central areas, more so keeping the shape, keeping the structure and dropping into it as much as possible, making it very hard for the opposition to try and get any space in behind or try and exploit the space between the lines. As for the team width, I've set this to 15, a bit more condensed now, looking to try and compact a hell of a lot more. As well as the depth, it's also slightly further back. Still set to a mid-block, a lower mid-block you could consider it, but a mid-block nonetheless. Set to 35, minimizing the space even more in behind the back line. As for the offense, of course, it will still be set to long ball as well as direct passing for the trans creation. As for the team width, it is set to 65. A slightly more, you know, narrow approach to the offense. You don't overly require your, your wing backs to constantly bomb forward and create the width. So therefore, 65 will do, allowing you to try and channel a lot of your attacks a bit more centrally. In terms of the players in the box, again, it is still set to 5, allowing 2 to 3 players to be in and around the attacking area. And then, of course, the corners and the free kicks, there will be no changes for it. It will still be set to 4. So guys, moving on to the instructions, there will be a few tweaks and changes, but your goalkeeper will still have the same set of instructions, along with the likes of Tior, Kalulu, as well as Tumori, all being set to the same set of instructions. The first major change that we do see here is the likes of Hernandez and Calabria not overly getting that much forward, but of course they are now slightly deeper in those wing back positions. So for the attacking runs for both of them, it will be set to a balanced attack as well as overlap. So when they do get forward, they will provide a bit of width down either flank as well as step up. You want them to still have that aggressive engaging mentality, getting nice and close to the opposition um, in those wider areas. As you'll see for the likes of a Calabria, same role and instructions as well. As for your midfield three, there's no major changes to them. Of course, you'll have a look here at Bennett Sir, cut passing lane, stay back while attacking conservative inceptions, deep line playmaker, and then of course, cover the center. The same will apply for Rinders, balanced, balanced, and of course, normal, cover the center and drift wide. And the same again goes for the likes of a Ruben Loftus-Cheek. No major changes for them. Further forward now, we've got the likes of Jovic. Again, no major changes for his style of play. Still going to be a target man. Still going to be allowed to drift into those wider channels. But because it's a bit more honed in, he will more naturally look to try and stay a bit more central at times. Of course, finally, for the likes of a Rafael Leal, there is one tweak and change to it. And that will be get him behind. You want him to have a bit more um, of a purpose to how he makes his runs. And that will consistently be looking to break him behind. Allowing for Jovic to flick on the, the, the ball from a, a lofted pass and allow him to try and exploit the space in behind the opposition. Because of course, you will be looking to sit a bit deeper, inviting the opposition onto you, and therefore it can allow for quite a bit of space to be exploited. And again, you want the likes of a Rafael Leao to try and do that very effectively. Otherwise, no major changes to his instructions. Okay guys, so it wouldn't actually be a what if scenario if we didn't put down a few players on the short list for you guys to potentially go ahead and bring into your side. Now, of course, these players, they have not been linked to AC Milan in real life. There's no major, you know, real sources linking these players. There might be one or two, I'm not too sure. But these are just players that I think would suit the Antonio Conte system, followed with a bit of logic behind it as well. So, more naturally, AC Milan do not have an overabundance of fullbacks that can play, you know, high and wide and very attacking. So, I've put down, I think it's five or six fullbacks that I think could definitely be very good, add to the, the system very effectively. Hatabor. Zappacosta, Mukiele, Baku, Wolf, and Dodo. Now, the reasoning behind it is, of course, Zappacosta has played for Conte in the past, and we have seen countless times that Conte, once he develops a relationship with a player, he will consistently keep them in his mind when he moves on to another team. We saw this with a Victor Moses and uh, Ivan Perisic. We have seen this countless times, and I do think that a Zappacosta, still playing in Italy, could potentially make a move to an AC Milan. Of course, Nordi, Mukiele, Baku, as well as Marius Wolf. Never really played for Conte. He's never really seen them play. He's never, played, he's never played up against them either. But we have also seen the AC Milan board scouts in, in, in Germany, find players, recruit them, bring them in to the Italian side, and them obviously doing very well. 
the likes of a Marius Wolf, his contract is also set to expire along with the likes of a Hatterbor, and that could just be a very good market opportunity for the AC Milan side, bringing in a free transfer that can definitely assist in those wider rights channels. So moving a bit more central, we've got the likes of Agurd, Ake, Badashile, Kelly, um, Kempembe, Thietz, Paco, Zagadu, uh, Buongiorno, as well as Kelly Fiori. Now, all of these center backs have one thing in common, and that is that they are left footed. Now, Conte doesn't necessarily always dictate that he needs a left footed center back. It's something that I just prefer, and I have gone ahead and scouted or put down on the shortlist a few left footed center backs that I think could do a very, very good job in this, you know, back three system. All very good ball playing center backs, all very pacey as well. And some of these players have been linked. I know the likes of Lloyd Kelly has been linked with a move to AC Milan, which would be absolutely incredible. But Chile as well, also linked with a move, and he could be a very solid option. Very good in the air, some really good play styles to go along with it. But they are all left footed, so I don't think you can go wrong with any of these players um, that I've put down here. Maybe you guys can let me know down below a few more that I may have missed out. But again, would all add to an Antonio Conte-esque system. As for your left back departments, I've put down the likes of um, Biragi, Aitanori, as well as Bueno. Also, all very good, solid options in that uh, wide left channel. Very good attacking. They could almost be a like-for-like -like, um, change with the likes of a Theo Hernandez, so you wouldn't have to change too much when it comes to the instructions. Um, Baragi, slightly more experienced, but a very good, solid option for the side going forward. Now, into the midfield, we've got the likes of Hoiberg as well as Benton Core. Those are the only two midfield players that I have put down. I don't think that an AC Milan side, or the current AC Milan side, would need too many changes more centrally. They do have quite an abundance of, of central midfielders that are all very capable of playing the various different ways that Conte would probably expect and require. But as a few options, Hoiberg is set to leave Tottenham in the summer, has kind of never really had a foothold with uh, the Ange Postacoglu system, consistently been used as a bench option. So I do see them, you know, selling him for some money, recouper, recouping that money and investing it back into other signings for Ange. But... The, the possible link-up play with Conte yet again, because Conte was the manager when they signed him, or, or was it Jose? But nonetheless, uh, Hoiberg was a brilliant player under Conte. Very good in the system, very good in the shape, maintaining the, the structure at all times. He could be a very good possible starter for the side. I think he has an 85 overall or, or an 84 overall, something along those lines. He could either be a very good bench option, backup option for the likes of a Bennett Sir, or even a, a natural starter. The same goes for Benton Core, a very solid option when, you know, Conte was there. Of course, he did get injured and it was very unfortunate, but he could be a very good option for this AC Milan side. And now further forward, we've got the likes of an Ivan Tony, uh, Jonathan David, Ugarassi, uh, Patrick Schick, and then of course, finally, a Xerxes. Now, these players, apart from a Jonathan David, all are very strong, physical, tall. I do think that maybe a Jovic, maybe a, an Olivier Giroud, don't really fit the, the natural Conte system. He needs a lot of running, and maybe Jovic can essentially fit that. But uh, a, a Giroud who is set to leave AC Milan, I think he's linked with a move to either the US or, you know, somewhere there. He could possibly be out the door. That's what I'm trying to say here. So replacing him with a very strong physical number nine, like a Joshua Xerxes, who also is very technically gifted, Maybe even a Patrick Schick, again, very strong, very tall, very physical. The ability to link up play, higher up the field. It's all there. Ivan Tony as well, which could be a potential shock move. He is, you know, set to leave Brentford in, in the summer, but quite a few of the bigger teams, they've kind of backed themselves away from, from the deal. Of course, he was linked with a, a massive move to Arsenal, and then the reports came out that, you know, Arsenal aren't really that interested. They, they, don't, they aren't impressed with his attitude. Um, link with a move to Chelsea. Chelsea don't really go for players over 25 these days, but he could still make that move. Also link with a move to Man United. That could be a good or a bad fit, and it does depend on how Ineos decides to go in for him. But a shock move to Italy could also be on the cards. We have seen AC Milan sign countless English players, English talents, to Mori, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Why not go ahead and sign an Ivan Tony to pair it up with, you know, the other Englishmen in the side? And I think he could be a very, very, like, Guys, very, very, very good fit for this side. The way that Brentford play, they kind of obviously are slightly more toned down compared to how Conte plays, but the ability to be physical, win the flick-ons, win the aerial duels, be that striker that's, you know, the focal point up front, 
that could be a very good Ivan Tony type role. Now, I have also put down a Jonathan David. He is also looking to leave the likes of Lille in the summer and maybe a shock move to Italy. AC Milan could be on the cards for him, being a natural replacement for a Rafael Leal off the bench, possibly, adding a lot of pace, the ability to make those runs off of the shoulder of the, the other striker is there for him. And I, th I think he could also be a very solid fit. And there you go, guys. That is how I would replicate the Antonio Conte system for this AC Milan side. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to smash that like button down below. Subscribe, leave a comment. And of course, as always, I hope you have a goddamn great day. I'm out.